I've been playing guitar since uh, 1983, um, and I started off mainly playing um, like uh, rock and uh, blues-based guitar, uh, mainly in garage bands and things like that. Uh, and not garage in the sense of, yeah, not 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 like yeah, not like the sh- Sonics or whatever like that, but just you know people getting together in their garages <laughs> and we were trying mostly would try and play whatever classic rock songs were popular of that day but um as the years went on i became more interested in feedback and noise like when i moved to houston in 85 uh, i 
got involved with a lot of people who were playing punk and noise music and was mainly playing that for and also a little heavy metal <laughs> and uh, for a little while too but that's i mean you know i've i feel like uh most of my guitar influences come from the records i listened to like at least in the early years and only maybe in the last five or six years a lot has come from people i play with as well um but i mean i've gotten a lot from punk and i've gotten a lot from uh like folk, uh, a little bit from folk actually, more from psychedelic, psychedelic rock, guitar solos and that kind of thing. A lot, a lot of Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, and uh, but also, you know, Sonic Youth and it's all all kinds of things. Uh, I taught myself how to play guitar by playing and by listening to other people and by playing with Tom mainly. And um, influences would be <laughs> a lot, many different ones, but uh, people that I've played with personally, um, mainly, and mostly Tom. Um, several guitarists from Houston that people may not know, but uh, Roberto uh, Caffresi from Dry Nod was definitely one of them. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
a lot of the parts on those songs that I now play when we play them live were originally improvised. And uh, we do tend to go back to songs also when we're playing them live and uh, rework them extensively. Like we'll change a lot of stuff or change the mood or change the tempo sometimes. But, you know, it, it is always based on a song. We're very much sort of let things happen. So we would go along with the situation with Heather recording more at night, low light or whatever. And then for some reason, when I was in Oakland, it just turned out to be daytime, full brightness and pretty much, it's it's not a very uh, mysterious atmosphere at all. But, um, a, lot, a lot of it, uh, a lot of it has to do with where we're living too. Um, for Joy Shapes, we lived in a fairly large house uh, with not no neighbors, so we could play late at night and it could get fairly loud and it wouldn't bother anybody. Uh, but in Oakland, I have you know I have neighbors on all sides of me, so I can't really can't really do too much recording after you know after everyone's gotten home from work. So we would, I tend to record now during the day, whereas before I think it would be more at night. The songs change and the way we play them change, the way we record them change based on real life things. Or, And that's how I like to approach music in general, as a sort of changing person, as everyone is every day, instead of sort of artificially setting up. Now we're going to record and it's going to be mysterious. What if you don't feel very mysterious that day? I think that all the, all those records that we made while in Texas, I think definitely are, couldn't have happened anywhere else. And uh, I mean, the, the, the circumstances of the recordings, the mood of the recordings, um, to some extent, even the sound of the recordings are heavily influenced by you know, the conditions of our lives and, you know, Texas uh, kind of exerts a very heavy presence to uh, to the people that live there. So it's kind of, uh, it's impossible to keep it out of your music if you're from Texas, I think. 